Rolling Stone and um, Axel Springer Media House in Berlin, and he's a co-initiator of um, this um, Music Hack Day that we are about to talk about now. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, it's an honor for me to be on stage with you, and uh, Eric is uh, responsible for the um, interactive technology and startup issues here at the Music um, Berlin Music Week, and uh, he's also a co-initiator co of the Music Hack Day as well. So... Yeah, let's get started. We have this um, really uh, large group up here. Um, so, um, first of all, I mean, I know there, there are some pros um, in the audience. I uh, see Paul, <laughs> definitely a pro, <laughs> and he should be up here, but uh, maybe he can just um, intervene. <laughs> yeah, come on. Don't you want to get up? No. <laughs> no. Okay, he had, he had his talk already. Um, first of all, um, are we all aware of the concept of a hackathon? Or should we just um, read out a little um, definition of uh, what a hackathon actually is? Should we? Okay, I do it anyway. Um, uh, what is a hackathon? Um, also known as Hack Day, Hack Fest, or Code Fest. An event in which computer programmers and others involved in software development, including graphic designers, interface designers, and project managers collaborate intensively on software projects. That is what uh, you can uh, find on uh, Wikipedia about a hackathon. And, um, well, let me quickly um, tell you something about the uh, Music Hack Day um, that we uh, prepared for tomorrow. Um, first of all, um, we try to integrate this um, hackathon um, into this uh, Berlin Music Week construction. So this is basically um, the starting point. Uh, when um, Sebastian and myself um, thought it would be so nice if everybody's coming into town uh, for um, IFA and for Berlin Music Week and uh, other events, there's also a TEDx conference taking place uh, this weekend, um, to yeah, do a um, making event, not just uh, talking conferences and business, but also producing stuff and um, getting into um, some community um, activities. And um, this is when um, we from Berlin Music Week um, contacted um, the Media House guys. Um, they published The Rolling Stone here in Germany, Musik Express, and also Metal Hammer. Um, said, uh, yeah, cool, uh, we'd love to um, join and um, try to, to get it um, started. That was back in May. Um, yes. Now we are uh, here. Um, it's beginning of September. Um, we have prepared um, the uh, Music Hack Day that starts actually tomorrow. We also have um, workshops here taking place today. Um, there's later on an um, artist workshop um, with uh, Henrik Schwarz, Emika, and some other um, featured artists. Um, maybe also something you want to join. Um, and um, we would love to um, give you some information about the uh, guys actually attending and uh, their motivations to yeah. attend. And perhaps some numbers. We have over 200 applicants uh, from the hackers, designers, interactive uh, visionaries and uh, people like that. And, so and I even think musicians. Even musicians, right. <laughs> and so that's, that's pretty awesome, I would say. And we have also 80 people from outside of Germany. So I think that, that shows that there is um, a lot of potential doing something like that in Berlin. I think it's the first um, hackathon on music uh, since 2009, and so it's, I think, pretty great to do it here now. Yeah, okay. Um, about the construction, one more thing. Um, so there's Berlin Music Week as a kind of platform to also promote uh, the uh, Music Hack Day idea um, among like music industry people, for instance. Then there's um, the um, Springer Media guys, uh, Media House guys, who said like um, they um, have um, the infrastructure and also the venue where it's going to take place tomorrow, the actual hackathon. And, and there's, of course, um, the community folks, also like um, Paul here in the audience, who uh, attended one million uh, music hack days and other um, music hackathons that um, came to join us this year here in Berlin. Um, and Actually, very important, there are a lot of um, technology partners and uh, also sponsors that um, participate. Um, and um, I'd like to start our little introduction round here um, with Rio. With me? Yeah, okay. why not? All right. Can you uh, just uh, make a quick intro guys. round? Just uh, <laughs> let us know who you are, uh, what kind of um, partnership you're having with the uh, Music Hack Day, what you 
what your company does. So my name is Rio, and uh, I'm a co-founder of More Tracks. And More Tracks is a music discovery engine that we developed, uh, that we launched early this year. And uh, this is our first hackathon, and we are super excited to be here. And uh, the core of why we're here and why we're so excited is we really want to see what other smart guys, genius guys, can do with our technology that we developed. It's new, fresh, and out of boundaries. And yeah, we want to share that adventure with you guys. Okay, That's but we're going to ask more about motivations. Um, All right. Keep on. Um, Oh, so let's let's continue here with Damien uh, from Sensory. He's coming from Miami, and so let's see what he has to say. <coughs> Hello, yeah, uh, Damien Balumi. I'm the CEO of Sensory. We develop Music Graph, which is a pretty large uh, semantic graph on music. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be basically uh, allowing the developers to play around with our data that goes from um, a lot of information about the artists and their connections to each other, as well as um, a, a ton of social information uh, about the artists, acoustic features, lyrical features, and so forth. So it should be a, they should have a, a good time with, uh, with the data that we have available. Cool. Um, Rebecca is next, I guess. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm Re Rebecca with Ardio. We're a music streaming online service. And uh, we're here because we have several APIs available for developers so that they can play music from their custom applications that they create this weekend. Uh, primarily playing music, but we also have some stats and social and playlist creation stuff as well. But the idea is we're here to facilitate developers to create awesome things. Next one goes to Jörg, uh, I guess. Hi, yeah, my name is Jörg. I'm a uh, founder of uh, Xtreme. Uh, a Berlin company who, uh, that is trying to help hardware manufacturers to build uh, hardware streaming, uh, audio hardware, and essentially our product is actually an API. So we are made for developers uh, as well. What we, what we provide is we help uh, companies who want to build an internet radio or a hi-fi set uh, and who want to integrate services like audio uh, in their uh, devices and also use local uh, music. We provide them with an unified API. We help them to do lifecycle management so that they don't have to implement each API for each service separately. They don't have to do changes whenever a service changed uh, because hardware uh, obviously has different uh, life cycles. So we help them to focus on building exciting products and we do the hard work on the back end. And we also help them on creating uh, user interface components for the user, so apps or uh, web interfaces, so that you can build a, a multi-room system or something like that, and have a good, generally a good user experience. Excellent, um, Michael from Deezer. Yep. Yeah, so um, I'm Michael. Um, I founded a streaming service, music streaming service, together with Prozim the Dines called Empire. Um, and we launched this one year ago, and now this week we have merged it with Deezer, and now I'm heading up uh, the Deezer operations in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Um, and now I have this wonderful API that Deezer provides to the largest music catalog that's available on streaming with uh, far over 30 million tracks and uh, in over 180 uh, countries. So I would love to, to open that up uh, for our developers to be able to use it, uh, experiment with that, and uh, of course then also to launch those applications uh, if they're funky, nice, or inspiring uh, in our network. And there's Stefan. Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm not from a startup, not from a revenue-driven company. I'm from a research institute, even a German one. It's the German Research Center for AI. Maybe if you don't know, it's like 800 people at five sites, one of the largest centers in the world for AI. And I'm working since 15 years or so on music recommenders. And for the hackathon, we have a new API, which allows pretty much similar to the stuff Sensori does, access to the semantic graph of musical facts, like what has Elton John to do with, I don't know, Lady Gaga. And if you trigger such a request to the graphs, then you get several answers and nested graphs and structures who explain why they have nothing to do with each other or why they are interesting facts, how you can go from one to the other. 
and the graph might be still small. It's only 10 million concepts and 30 million relations, but it's high quality stuff and it's the real facts and not some fuzzy, vague, social, I don't know what. Um, and the API is quite slim, which I think is pretty convenient to access. So it's only like, yeah, you have a specified catalog of five to eight different requests. So with two lines of code, you can have amazing stuff. But since we are so lazy in, and so bad, actually, in front-end design, in fancy and shiny, whatever you need to make it appealing for these iPhone, etc., young guys, we hope that we scout some fresh and new talent. Uh, but that's the motivation talk already. you got to stop here. Uh, you are not That's the right. That would be the next yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, the wrong audience. Sorry for this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Go on, Stefan. So, no, Andrew. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Andres. I work for Universal Music. I'm part of a team called the New Tech Team, and I'm a software engineer there. And I'm part of a team that basically what we do is try to apply the latest cool tech to the music industry and help the record label to become a record label from the 21st century. And yeah, that's why we are here. We've been just uh, sponsoring Hacks, and we're here to expose our metadata through an API. So we're hoping developers that can access to that data and just play with it, have fun. And we also want to have fun because we're going to be hacking. Yes. And um, there's um, Stefan. Hi there. Um, my name is Stefan. I'm here um, as my functionality as co-founder of BeatGuide, which is an event discovery platform for the dance music community. Um, we're all about dance music, and uh, Berlin is our home base, and what better home base could we dream of than Berlin for dance music, right? Um, it's, um, it's very much about, you know, you imagine yourself going out with some friends, and the age-old question comes up, what shall we do tonight, where shall we go out tonight? And you can be the man with the plan, because you just look at your app, open it up, and buy distance, you know, it gives you by proximity, it gives you the closest clubs to where you are. It gives you the lineup, all the other information that it aggregates, so you've got it in the palm of your hand. And uh, it just, it doesn't just list the lineup, but also you can just click and press play on those. So it streams you automatically the music. So the sentence, oh, I've never heard of him or her, can never be an excuse ever again to go to a club. And uh, why we're here, we're here because this is our first... Um, oh, too much of motivation. Say, Come on, give it a break. Right, right, Reiner, Reiner, take <laughs> There's Rainer waiting already. Take over, take over, sorry. Rainer, go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Rainer. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Loud. Um, we have a product that we call uh, Loud FM. It's something uh, we call user-generated radio. It's about 1,500 uh, radio, online radio stations um, curated by music experts, by real people, because uh, we believe that humans are still and maybe always will be superior to machines when it comes to selecting music. And, um, yeah, 1,500 stations, it's the largest online radio network in, in Germany, and it's our first music hack day, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, let's um, dive into the uh, motivation um, talk. I mean, um, it's yeah. cool. No. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, extremely, um, or, or let's put it this way, when we started organizing um, the um, music hack day, it was perfectly clear. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, community folks in town, um, coders, designers, uh, musicians. But um, yeah, well, how to get like these, um, let's say, technology um, partners um, on board? And um, maybe this is also like, a, if if you guys uh, think about doing your own hackathon at some point, I mean, I think it is really important to to get some. Um, interesting technology partners um, in order to motivate the other guys to jump on the train. And um, for instance, um, Stefan here, uh, who works with the um, um, DFKI, was one of the first um, technology partners that we announced. I mean, can you tell us um, a little bit about um, your motivation or the motivation of your um, institute to um, participate in, in, in such an event? 
Yes, as I already mentioned, it, it, it's clear it's about talent scouting, you know. We always have interesting topics for bachelor, master, PhD thesis. So, and I'm often asked via email by people like, yeah, I googled a bit and you seem to be, to know something about music retrieval, can I do this and that? But over an email, and it's often international requests, it's kind of, yeah, tricky you can end up that both sides are not so super happy. That's why I prefer to have good analog and in real life meets. Um, and that's why I think it's, it's pretty much appealing for us to get to know these people, to see what they built, to coach them uh, over our API. So that's a point. And the other one is visibility. It's not the ivory tower, so boring, crazy institute burning, all our money for just publications and boring papers. No, it, it's about that we do really care about these times, about big data, um, and that's why we want to show off with it, for sure. Is it sufficient? It totally. Now? So so I, I hear talent uh, is uh, super interesting. Um, I heard from other partners, like they call it uh, human resources, <laughs> could be an aspect. Um, maybe. Let me ask one of the, um, let's say, um, one of, or the, the streaming guys, maybe. Um, I mean, I know you, you are rather um, a, a programmer, um, but Michael is rather a managing guy. So maybe I ask you Sorry. first. Um, um, so what, what, what it's the, what's the motivation of a uh, major streaming company to uh, come to a Music Hack Day? I mean, the, the motivation is to, to get inspiring ideas of how we can extend the product, uh, so to have new uh, apps that, that we can roll out. Me personally, actually, I'm missing a, a clock application so that I can, in the morning, wake up with the music from Deezer. So this will be my pitch tomorrow to ask the developers. So this is one of your challenges? <laughs> one of them can do this because it's, it's a bit challenging because of the uh, it needs to run in the background. You don't have to, I mean, it's, it's, you don't want uh, the app to be uh, open all the time or the phone to be on. So I'm, I'm challenging them if they can do it. But yeah, apart from that, we are looking for inspiring new apps. And uh, yeah, this is part of our philosophy to open up uh, the catalog to developers. Yeah, I think um, Sebastian will um, ask later on uh, about outcomes and stuff. Uh, yes. So. <laughs> uh, but um, let me um, ask Rebecca first. I mean, just um, uh, as another, uh, as another uh, person coming from a streaming organization. So we have uh, publicly available APIs and an SDK and stuff for random developers around the world to use. But we also have, you know, that same stuff and a little bit more available to paying customers like um, Sonos and Roku and other people. And often we hear feature requests first from the people all around the world so they can get us ready for when the big paying customers have requests. We're like, oh yeah, we already implemented that. It's cool, it's right there for you already. Which, going to a hackathon is where we figure out what that next question is going to be. All right. Um, would be interesting to, um, since we, uh, let's, let's let, it, let, it, let it put me this way, there are also like startups uh, involved in this um, whole um, um, construction. Um, Rio, maybe um, would be nice to, to hear from a uh, rather startup uh, perspective. Um, is it, is it uh, like, a, like a big deal to, to um, get into uh, such an event or was it like pretty open to, to all kind of partners? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a really big event for us. Uh, we've been building something that we are really fond of, that we really love. And of course, we want, uh, we did a lot of testing, but we want to expose it to big players and all the other people and see what they give us as, as feedback and if they give us a reality check, what could be improved and what other ideas can be implemented with the technology that we build. So, this is a big question mark for us now to find out what is possible, what do people really think, what do the big players say about us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, it's, uh, it's like the ta da! And start the music. Okay, know. it's also an opportunity for startups or, or even um, yeah, other organizations who are, who are not uh, totally involved into like the big business sphere yet mm -hmm. um, to um, yeah, show off and maybe make some, um, make some new relations. Yeah, or? yeah, new relations, not show off really. It's, it's more like to find out where are we at, uh, what are we onto, and um, to get answers by people that really know the field or get new perspectives. That's basically what it's all about. And uh, criticism, productive criticism, always open for it and uh, excited to hear what people are gonna do with us tomorrow. 
Yeah, it's also a good platform for you to validate your stuff. So, yeah, just totally. what happened and uh, what what perhaps does not happen, what you expect. So, exactly, exactly. That's very important for startups, right? Yeah. So, uh, Damien from from Sensory, they're coming from the United States, and so they have also an office here in Berlin, but. I want to ask him why they come to Berlin to join a hackathon because there are so many music hackathons in the States as well and so you're coming now to Berlin and uh, and throwing in their, their B2B um, API, their graph API and so I just want to ask you about your motivation to be here in Berlin. Yeah, so um, we, we opened our API earlier this year. We have hundreds of users, of so companies using it, several large paying customers, um, so definitely this is a great ground to test uh, test concepts out and see how people use it. Uh, we also use it to recruit. So we have half, half a dozen people in Berlin. We're probably going to grow that two or three times uh, this year um, alone. So obviously looking for talent. And uh, also I'm, I run product and vision of the company, so I'm always looking for ideas. Uh, we recently announced Music Graph AI, which is the first artificial intelligence engine that is open based on our data to people, so it's not only our data is available, now our entire computer infrastructure is, uh, is available, so people could even run their own algorithms on top of what we have. So we are, we're looking to, to open that up, actually, to the, to the developer community soon. So I'm looking to talk to people and see uh, you know, some potential partners to test it out and to, to, to see what we could do together. Um, Andres, um, since you're coming from a major um, um, music uh, company, um, I think um, when I did some research on um, former um, Music Hack days, I think it's not such a long time that, um, let's say, major um, music companies actually attend these events. I think there was always like this this hack concept, maybe a bit spooky, and if you think you want to sell records, I mean, what, what I, am I supposed to do with uh, hackers? And can you tell us uh, something um, about maybe um, a change um, in, in, in the minds of also the music companies with regards to uh, these events? It's, it's kind of, I always say, like the fact that I work for a new tech team that is part of a record label, it kind of makes sense to be in this environment. But uh, we say that it's more than that, is the fact that I'm part of a very forward-thinking team that is, is a group of uh, data scientists and engineers. And basically what we do is try to understand what's the latest tech that is available and basically help the, help the record label to live in this new digital and data-driven world. So we work on projects like metadata enrichment and we also work on platforms for music discovery and we do a lot of big data analysis to understand the consumer base and how fans interact with, with artists. Um, we, we, we do all of this in-house, basically. And it's a bit like if you think about us a record label as the epicenter of a label becomes an artist, that they are super creative. Mm -hmm. And we see like we need to be creative with technology to help the artists, basically. Because mm -hmm. that's how we think, yeah. that's what I was talking before about becoming a record label of the 21st century. So for us, when we come to Hack Days, it's a bit like we free ourselves from those daily projects, and it's just like a space for play, have fun, interact with the community, innovate, which is like, for me, is the magic of hackathons, basically. That's what I really like. Um, just uh, one more question uh, with regards to uh, Universal Music. Um, we will also have a um, music startup that was basically, um, uh, um, uh, which basically derives from this um, um, Universal Music um, universe, so to speak, yep. and we, um, it, it is the um, startup spin-up. Yep. Um, is this also something uh, your um, department or your, your unit is actually um, involved in? Uh, um, some people from my team uh, work with them. It's more like, um, that's more like universal thinking that is uh, saying, well, we have the knowledge of tech because we have this tech team, and we also have the expertise about what's been a record label and they have the expertise of the music industry. So it's a bit like becoming an, an incubator, saying if there's an idea that can, it works like it's tech within the music environment, we can just provide help on that and support. Mm. That's where the spin up yeah. idea comes from. Uh, maybe just this, um, this little hint uh, also regarding tomorrow's program here, there'll be a music startup corner when we um, will present um, some fresh music startups from all over the place um, starting tomorrow, three o'clock, just for you to know. Sebastian, what so, questions do you have? 
final motivation of Jörg, I would say. Um, so you're bridging kind of the software world with the hardware, right? And so all the other guys on the stage are just focused on software. And so I think that's quite uh, exciting that you bring those APIs together and make it accessible to the hardware, so to the speakers and stuff like that. And so I think that's quite different. And so what do you expect to see tomorrow? And what's your motiv motivation? Yeah, essentially... What, what we primarily provide is an API, so for us, a hack day is kind of a natural, natural playground because we really work for developers. Even though it's mainly focused on hardware, it's not necessarily hardware. We have a complete software environment that you can just install on a off-the-shelf hardware like a Raspberry Pi or something like this, so you can easily start hacking things together. Um, but um, first of all, we also want, it's like, like with Rio, we, we need feedback. Uh, we are just launching uh, the September uh, in an open beta, so we really want to understand what 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 we've done. Is this exactly what developers need? Um, we also we have done a, a big beta program with with different developers from from various areas, but you still you always can can use more feedback, and at the same time. Uh, we want to see what people are actually trying to do, what kind of cool new features are out there that we might want to support that we totally didn't think about in our API and that might be missing and uh, what is the next thing that we need to, need to take into consideration so that we don't run into the same trap that next year we find, oh, we've got last year's API, but this year's big thing that isn't supported. So we try to listen to um, I, I, I got one, one, one question to, I don't know, whoever wants to, uh, or feels he wants to, uh, or she wants to answer. Um, since um, in this um, um, music um, hackathon context, it's always complicated to integrate musicians. Um, I mean, we heard from, um, I think there was a hackathon um, um, during the uh, South by Southwest. There was really like, I mean, I think they really tried hard to um, get like music artists um, into um, the whole hacking process, um, but I think there were also some 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 failures. Uh, some stuff really worked out well. Um, I was just wondering, um, you any opinions um, here among you guys? I mean, is it is it good to 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 have like uh, music artists like being um, involved into the whole process, or is it rather, I don't know, it's uh, nice to have or <laughs> need some, some, some clam factor or something? Uh, any opinions here amongst uh, you guys? I don't know if you mean artist as an officially labeled artist or just someone who creates really interesting sounds, but uh, at the Barcelona, the Barcelona one, it certainly makes for a more exciting demo at the end when there's, you know, 30 teams demoing and it's like, look at another map or a DJ app. You're like, yeah, cool. And then someone gets up and I'm like, I'm going to do a live performance for 30 seconds and they just dance and there's amazing sounds on stage. There's nothing they can really show for that afterwards, but I'm way happier. I mean, I experienced something that was totally unique and they created using hardware or software and feedback. And I, I like those. Just following up with another one, or Sebastian, are you? Are you Jörg, you 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 want to um, um, add? Yeah, actually, I think I mean we have two two end end points on the on the whole value chain for for music. One is the the listener, the the uh, the audience, and the other end is the artist, and they kind of need to get together, and that's what we are doing in the end here. And uh, we actually have worked uh, with some, uh, especially DJs, but also uh, other music musicians, and we have learned with them uh, what kind of issues they have because they also use these kind of systems. They also want to yeah. stream or something, and, and uh, there I hear of issues why people, for example, can't use streaming and uh, when they do DJing and things like that. And no, it's not just a network connection. But did you have the feeling that is, uh, it is hard to um, collaborate um, with um, artists? Because let me just quickly tell you uh, this one thing, uh, the workaround that we tried, because we thought it would be cool to have musicians taking part in, in the hack. Uh, so what we did was like uh, trying to um, organize some pre-workshops like before the actual um, coding thing. And um, 
make the people acquainted to each other, just um, even ask um, some um, renowned music artists here in Berlin, like what you just said, like, um, do you do you have a challenge? Is there something you want to have solved um, in such a um, um, hackathon um, context? And um, is this uh, something you can imagine or is this possible? Have you seen uh, results where uh, musicians like, oh, there's Stefan Baumann. I mean, you can give a very long answer to this question. Um, but but there, there are two sides of the story. Either you have artists being close to generating sound with technology and tools like Henrik Schwartz and so on, and they want to step beyond the typical Ableton and uh, Max MSP stuff. They are pretty close to us because they know how to talk code and stuff. Yeah. And it's easy with them and there have been several formats, maybe more at academic settings where you have workshops, mock-up prototyping with these people. Yeah. Um, the other side is that if you try to have this interdisciplinary setting, uh, you have the clash, you know, um, and it's about, I mean, we talk code, we talk API, we talk REST and stuff like this. And it's fair enough that a musician is not so much interested in even that he's interested in the outcome. So it's, it's pretty tough without moderation to get the people into the flow. Yeah. There this was basically is one really still a tricky thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, coding is something kids do in kindergarten, so it will be better yeah. in, in a couple of years. Yeah, just one, one, one. But it's a big oh, challenge. No, 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 no Stefan needs to talk. He, he really needs to talk. He was like, <laughs> All the time, so thank you very much. Ahead. Thank you very much. No, I think I, I agree with what you were saying, Eric, and actually what, what you were saying, um, uh, Stefan, my namesake, thank you, um, is that it's all about the communication between the different interest, gr interest groups, right? So, like with Beat Guide, we're all about synergy between live and recorded dance music, and you can really just like the artists have an interest as well as the you know the club promoters and the, the clubs themselves they have their own interests and it's all just about you know fulfilling all of those getting people together and trying to build some creative crazy shit that actually does it all i'm i'm sure it's the same with you know like a quality music streaming service like audio you know they want to fulfill not just the the user satisfaction and that the users are pretty happy which i'm sure they are because it's a great service but you know also the artists so it's all about the synergy i guess and and yeah that's what we're here for so so it's basically or one task how we understood it or one challenge so to speak was like um, find uh, a construction to actually get these people involved in a pretty useful way I mean, any yeah it's, it's about you creating a setting that is conducive uh -huh. to actually getting you know, the techies and the artists and, I don't know, whoever else has any need, burning need. Oh, like um, the um, gentleman from, uh, sorry, what was your name again? Mike. Mike. What, was, what Mike was saying about the timer, you know, I'm pretty sure that um, there is streaming services out there that have already done this, but still it's a valid point that, you know, people have that need and that use and that's what a hackathon is there to do, to provide a solution. So, um, what I said earlier, like we, we're having a, artist workshop um, taking place right at the moment um, in parallel to, to this um, little introduction round here. So uh, we are really curious um, if there's like a really um, productive outcome of this workshop. So will there be like artist X, Y um, tell, um, I want to have the solution for this problem and are there really people attending already who say, oh, we might have an answer and let's go and work uh, on this thing tomorrow. So that would be really, uh, it would be really interesting. Um, but um, talking about outcomes, um, you want my mic? <laughs> so perhaps um, some of you already attended at the hackathon, right? Um, so what were your experiences uh, in those uh, prior hackathons? Well, like, um, in my case, we've been attending hackathons for the last four years. Um, we've been hacking, sponsoring, challenging prices. And this time we're offering an API for the community. We did it in Sonar as well. Uh, so we can have people can have access to more metadata that is difficult to get, like producers who has produced this track, if that's, this track contains samples or not, publishing data, all this kind of stuff. But for us, the outcome, it's, it, it, it can change a lot. Like sometimes 
Sometimes it can be members from my team coming for a hack, just setting up a team within, within, within us. And maybe we work on an idea that then can be turned up into an app in the future of a project. We did that with Tweetvine, which was like a Spotify app for, for, for Spotify that you can make real-time playlists just with hashtag now playing. But sometimes we just mix with other people from the community and then we just work on an idea. And it's not the first time that that was the trigger for then a collaboration in, 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 in the future. And sometimes we just come to have fun. Like in Sonar, we wanted to just make a gimmick between music and tech, and we just use consumer data to modulate analog synths. And sometimes it's just for recruiting as well. It's a good place, as he mentioned, for recruiting people, because you get people working on a project 24 hours, so you learn a lot from, from person. Yes, so how Sebastian, um, just, uh, I was about to say, uh, Paul um, demonstrated some, some really nice hacks this morning uh, in his presentation. Um, so talking about outcome, uh, I mean, in particular, any other of you guys um, attended a hackathon and, and came with a cool product or, or something that, that was worth like working on or uh, refining? Or is there, is there some experience uh, in, with this regard? Yeah, we basically came up with the idea for Empire for a totally new feature uh, from a hackathon that was then also implemented directly as it was from the hackathon, so that was great. Uh, it's not always the case for sure, sometimes it's just about ideas or getting some inspiration, uh, but I also had this that we directly could take over something and build it into the product as it was from the hackathon. No need to like work on it for days or weeks, it was just ready, it was great. So, and how do you make sure that there is a follow-up to the hackathon? Because there's an event and uh, there are many great ideas, but uh, the idea is always just to start. And so then you make sure uh, to, to get a follow-up and uh, how to make a product out of it and uh, perhaps make an innovation. So, any experience in that? Or is there like a particular process you have um, experiences with? Or? HR interface to, to talk how to talk to the people and yeah I mean f first of all I, I don't think the idea is that we take what the developers uh, produce and make a product out of them uh, out of it but the idea is really that the developers themselves uh, go on with that project yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have support channels for that we have built uh, up a, a dedicated support forum we have uh, Twitter and email address and things like that. So we, we will continue uh, that support over time. For the feedback, of course. I mean, we are here to to give feedback, uh, to get feedback and give feedback. Uh, so that that will certainly get into our API as well. But I think the, the main point is really that we want to enable people to uh, work with that and help them to go on with their product as well. And if they need support like, hey, help us help us with marketing when your, your hardware partners uh, need to learn about our product, that's uh, certainly something that can be done. But we don't want to take away uh, those ideas from, from developers. It's their ideas and their products. I think Rebecca has something to add. <laughs> yes, uh, very much along that same lines. You know, we also have blogs and we have Twitters that actually are followed by people. So we try to offer, you know, positive support and feedback and featuring people's stuff that they do in the hackathons. It's sort of like a token, like, if you do something cool, we'll totally point people your direction. Um, I can say that from the last time, um, in terms of taking a product from a hackathon and incorporating it ours, I was bribed with socks, and I have decided that I will work on a feature that this person was suggesting. So, you know, business cards and just talking to people at a hackathon, it, it is possible to have ideas, and if you bribe with socks. Yeah. And um, what we what we actually uh, what Andres uh, said in the very beginning, I um, think the motivation for the community folks to participate is rather like doing a bit of network, having a bit of fun. This is also like an, an aspect. If, if I mean, what do you say to your boss? I mean, is it okay to to say like, okay, I'm I'm going, I'm flying into Berlin to participate in this fun hackathon? Or is my this boss like said you're flying to Berlin. You're going to go <laughs> participate. So. <laughs> Um, well, should we open um, up the discussion and um, ask? I have, an, I have another question. So Go we ahead. are in Berlin, and uh, Berlin is now known as the startup and tech capital in perhaps Europe, yes? And so especially when it comes to music, I think there are a lot of music startups around, and there are a lot of uh, startups here on the conference. And so what is your relation on how you maintain the relation to those uh, 
uh, startups and people that are active in the music uh, tech community in Berlin? I mean, this is really super easy. There are much more events than you can join in your lifetime. And you are stumbling all over the time in the same people. So I would say, yes, it's a very concentrated thing here. It's about tech and music coming together. And you have this Berlin typical event-driven scheme, you know, which makes it very easy. You know, I, I go to the terrace and then it's like high five, high five, high five. And um, this is really absolutely no problem. If, if somebody is not able to connect to this scene here, I don't know. He's wrong completely. The, the, difficult part, the difficult part of probably to connect and still get work done. I mean, I could talk about sustainability of Berlin-based events, but I skip it. <laughs> yeah, you rather uh, quit for this time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Damien, for, for instance, said like he, he, he has an office here. So this is a very um, like a big step into, into this scene, so to speak, to um, just um, have people here on the ground. Um, well, yeah, we've been building a team. We acquired a company here, Kawawa, uh, about a year ago, and we're building a team uh, here. And, and, you know, it, it is a place where there's, uh, there's a lot of innovation happening. Um, we're more focused on try to innovate and make money. And sometimes, uh, I think sometimes uh, I, 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 you know, I fail to see that in a lot of music uh, events. Um, so hopefully, you know, we could contribute a little bit of that in, in the ecosystem and also allow people to make money with, with what we're producing. And, and that's sort of what we try to communicate as well. I think there are more folks actually who have offices here in town uh, or connect to yeah, Rio, for instance, like <laughs> really <laughs> seen. <laughs> Part of the scene, so to speak? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, well, I'm not from Berlin, so I came here five years ago. And the reason, I, come, I don't come from the startup scene at all. But um, arriving here and seeing the infrastructure and all these young guys trying to pull something off and try something completely new, um, there's amazing infrastructure here to start something. Um, even though the startup scene is, is, is a difficult field to go ahead and, and make a living, etc., and uh, get pulled through to it, it's all these people support each other. It's so easy to get in touch with other people, get advice, get feedback, and uh, get support. Basically, we are not competing against each other. We are like thriving together, and this is something that I haven't really experienced in any other scene before that, actually. So that's why I'm really happy to be here in Berlin, in that scene, actually. And that's um, what I'm really grateful about. Yeah. Are there um, other uh, opinions, experiences regarding like the uh, ecosystem? I mean, obviously, there, there must be something true about it. There are also like, some really, let's say, by now, big companies like, like SoundCloud, for instance, who said like, they want to start this off here in, in Berlin. So, or Native Instruments, Ableton, like, big music technology companies. Um, any other experiences with um, Berlin regarding, I don't know, this melange of uh, music, creativity, technology? No. <laughs> There's Andres. There's no money in Berlin. Uh, <laughs> well, I think you mentioned before, like, um, in my case, there's obviously the label side of finding new artists and everything, but it's, um, the relationship is that um, helping start like ideas through startup like incubators and this kind of stuff what it's like starting to flourish in right now and berlin is it's it's definitely a place has a name in the world for that startup environment right now so and i would say let's open it up to the audience if there are any questions from the audience oh, if you have questions um do you want to ask each other it's also possible <laughs> um Anybody from the audience who wants to talk to the guys over here? We even have a mic. C can I ask the audience, like, who's actually a hacker and who's going to attend the hackathon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. What, what, what are you looking forward to building? Oh, yeah, Mike. Excellent. Um, so, I, I mean, to answer your question and to ask another one, um, 
there are numerous hackathons uh, nowadays, like, and many of them are kind of uh, corporate, competitive, and Music Hack Day has always been different. Um, I, I actually remember, like, maybe last year at Boston Music Hack Day, or maybe a couple of years ago, Paul was uh, given an overview of what a Music Hack Day is, and like, he, in my own words, uh, it's um, uh, it's something quite isolated in terms of uh, it's not supposed to be really really useful to like something you do afterwards. So that's not the goal. The goal is uh, for it to be an uh, isolated experience that uh, you do without any strings attached, and that's the beauty. You, you're completely free. Uh, you don't care about like does this work? Is this completely uh, like legal? Does this break some term, terms of services? Like you, you can pull some data from, from here and there and it's completely okay because tomorrow the hack might not work and uh, uh, it's good. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of the questions that the hosts uh, were asking um, most of you were like, how uh, how hack days, uh, how music hack days are useful to you, to your companies, to artists. But uh, I guess uh, uh, all of you, most of you, are also recognizing that there's more to this, uh, that there's higher level usefulness uh, to hack days. Like for me, it's uh, uh, getting myself and people around me uh, believe in uh, like everything is possible. Uh, you can really do crazy stuff in 24 hours, uh, stuff that really takes like six months uh, a big company to do. Um, so usefulness like that. Uh, so wh wh what do you think, uh, like wh what does any of you think about that like more um, higher level usefulness of hackathons? Thanks. Thank you. Um, who wants to uh, just really quickly, I mean, I, I applaud of I applaud you for what you just said because uh, I'm, I'm friends with Martin Davis and uh, Dave Haynes who actually brought Music Day to life, uh, Music Hack Day to life, and um, they always like you know when they were talking about the idea at the early days uh, in some London pub somewhere, you know they always were saying you know it's very important that there is no company agendas, you know it's all about just breaking shit, putting it back together and creating useful stuff, but, you know, still crazy, you know, go wild, basically. And uh, I'm hoping this is going to be like that, you know. Yes. So do I. <laughs> uh, by the way, Martin is also um, stopping by. Uh, that's what he tweeted yesterday, at least. Ah, uh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, so this, is, this was very important for us when we organized this Hack Day that we totally open it up. And so we don't have an agenda on what we expect or what could be the outcome. And so we also try to bring in totally different fields. So we don't have, we have a lot of streaming services there, but we also have uh, hardware and a hardware lab where you can work with Raspberry Pis and uh, have a laser cutter and stuff like that. And so uh, there will be some people that just build a bicycle with LED lights and, and things like that. So you, 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 have, you, you could have a lot of fun, I think. And then we will see what happens. So I think that, that is, this is a very, very good point you made. And uh, so that's something we are really looking forward. But it was also like, um, let me add, like when we uh, started, it was totally clear, all right, uh, it might be difficult. Uh, there are big corporate players involved into the whole planning. So it was always like um, um, our attempt to, to integrate as many community folks as possible to just get some guidelines, like to make sure all right, this is not focused on exploiting um, um, coders or whoever who, who wants to um, uh, actually um, 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 uh, contribute uh, to this project. But it's true, that was really like part of the discussion just to, to make sure you're sitting at this table and everybody wants to, yeah, but we, we need to cover costs and bop, 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 and there needs to be the back office and who is, whoop, and we, uh, which logo will be on the website, stuff like that was, there was really like uh, in the beginning uh, a big discussion to, 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 to straighten this out that it is a community project in the end and obviously there there are logos now uh, on the website and these are basically like we we call them like enablers like they they 
paid some some guys who actually did some project management or a uh, web designer and and that was basically the construction that I think that we needed maybe there are other opinions uh, here but um, besides from that we hope that we, we, we will have it um, uh, we will have a good community event in the end I just want to throw out my favorite little analogy, which is, you know, I'm not athletic, but there's marathons, and I assume people run marathons because they're fun. I think they're kind of stupid because all you do is run. But, you know, there's corporate sponsorship on that. You know, you see Nike and Gatorade, but you don't need to wear Nike to run in the marathon. They just kind of want you to be there and have a good fun and maybe wear Nike when you run it, which is kind of like RDO, like, go and have fun and maybe use RDO while you do it. But still, like, the important thing is we're all getting together and, like, sprinting in a stupid, overly exerted manner for a short period of time to do something exciting. Other people do it too, and I don't feel like they make fun of them for it. So marathons, hackathons, totally the same thing in my book. <laughs> Except I do one of them. More opinions? <laughs> um, any other question? Or oh, there's a question uh, in the back. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm, uh, my name's Nadia. I am a Taiwanese journalist. I, last year, I live in China. So as you may have known, we don't have access to a lot of websites. Basically, the, the internet there is controlled by the government. So I'm wondering, I'm just throwing out a general idea of working under this kind of internet environment. Is this uh, an area that you guys will want to work on? Or no, just a general questions for everyone, anyone that's, that wants to talk about the internet freedom of China or any country. Um, you mean like uh, on a will it will it be a, a topic in this whole context or um, I don't know experiences like uh, how political uh, can uh, hackathons be or aren't they political at all I mean experienced guys go ahead Andres any any opinions here I don't think they're political at all it's just um, a whole bunch of people that meets to have fun and just push the boundaries of music and tech. That's basically, I think it's completely co disconnected with any political uh, involvement, basically. Yes, perhaps the only politicness is that it, it's not political. So I think this is also a statement, and uh, I think that's pretty important. I mean, that does not really help you with your question, or does but it? Hackers and programmers, programmers in general, you're working under a lot of restrictions. What if one day there is more restrictions? Will you be excited, or, or you think it's just government shit and you want to have fun, and you will live it? No. So. Also, a political aspect, I guess. I don't doubt for a second your free spirit, um, the free spirit of Hack Day. That's why it's valuable. Uh, I'm just saying, there is, there will be more difficulties, and I know there are changing regulations in the, in Europe as well. There'll be more, more censorship, more security checking. Um, so. But perhaps such a hack day is a way to break out, perhaps for 24 hours and uh, doing things that yeah. are not not necessarily um, possible anymore because of regulations. Yeah. And so this is something... Yeah, but have you um, actually had problems with regulations before? Like why the hack day? I don't think so. So any experiences? Yeah, I mean, it is something that I mean, we are not like driving the topics for a, for a hack day. We provide technologies that, that we have and that can be used, but this could certainly be an, a topic. I mean, you're talking about uh, two people who do a lot of stuff that have to do with music, and 
even though music sounds pretty removed, we have a similar situation there because we have a hell lot of limitations in doing and in, in using content APIs or using streams or whatever uh, because we do already have limitations there. They are not government imposed limitations, but it's like rights owners, we have a situation where we don't have a new kind of legal order for this and that's kind of project that also could be discussed on a, on a hack mm -hmm. day. Um, things like what needs to be done to change, uh, to enable a business model, to make this stuff that, that we can hack there in 36 hours work or how can mm -hmm. we make sure uh, that it's actually it, it persists and doesn't get shut down through some ridiculous uh, red, uh, regulation or something else. But that's something, there need to be people doing that. We are just providing the frameworks and um, it's, I think it, it is, uh, a hack day is an event where people could sit together, discuss mm -hmm. this and, and form such a project. And there will certainly be a lot of people there tomorrow who do have strong opinions in these yeah. in these areas and have knowledge in these areas. So, um, guys, drop by and, and, and try to find a team. Yeah, guys, just one thing. Uh, uh, I was, um, yeah, well, there was some, some hand waving that we <laughs> have to uh, actually stop at this point. Um, maybe one last sentence to, to what you said. Of course, uh, it should be uh, an open platform. Uh, of course, there's a lot of schedule that was set from the uh, organizers, but uh, I would also say that there should be um, the opportunity and the space to uh, also like come up with um, topics, just um, what you just raised. I mean, it, it's not on the schedule yet, but there's definitely um, like enough space to, to actually um, have this discussion, although it's not in particular on, on the schedule. But it also depends on what will happen on the hack day. So if there is any product product idea that uh, is has problems with or any limitations with the regulation from company or for or even uh, state your regulatory, so then this is something you could discuss afterwards. But you know, first you have just to to see what happened and. Uh, and then there will be some topics, I'm sure. So because there will yeah. be some uh, ideas that will be presented that will be a bit, little bit um, off, right? Yeah, and um, what Andrew said, fun uh, is not necessarily uh, freaking out, but fun can also be like a good discussion, I guess. And um, well, if you want to grab some more information about uh, Music Hack Day that's starting tomorrow, uh, I'd like to. Um, you to visit um, uh, musichackday.de. This is the website. I guess there's all the um, most basic information up there. And just in case there are people amongst you who want to, I don't know, uh, jump jump in uh, spontaneously, we will definitely find a way to, to get you uh, guys integrated if you're not registered or so. I mean, we're pretty booked, but um, we uh, talked to the uh, organizers that it's perfectly okay if somebody wants to join, we, we make it happen. Um, thank you all for uh, joining um, this, this nice Stuhlkreis, uh, as we call it in Germany. <laughs> in German. Um, thanks for uh, coming and um, presenting you and your ideas, your motivations, and I hope you're, you're having a great um, Music Hack Day and maybe also some fun on the site here on uh, Berlin Music Week. Thank you so much.